Thank you, Luke. Sure. Maybe a little tardy, but I hear my call this meeting to order. Um, anybody else like to do an invitation this morning, this afternoon? I'll go ahead. Uh, please uh, bow your heads. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together and, and do the work of the county. Uh, please be with us as we discuss the, the business of the county. And Lord, just help us remember all of those that are surrounding us in suffering. Lord, we lift them up and those who need healing and those who need protection. Uh, Lord, there's so many thoughts and so many people on our, our hearts in this season. So Lord, we just ask you for all those good things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. By Alderman Hayes, second by Commissioner Tinsley. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, show. show it's unanimous. Um, we have a motion for approval of the minutes from our last meeting in April. Second. So moved by Commissioner uh, Rhodes. Second <laughs> 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 by Commissioner Tinsley. Uh oh. And there's Mr. Hinton. We tried to make it. I got a car. All in favor of uh, approving the minutes? I, I think that was an I. I show it's unanimous. Uh, and I have to abstain. Yes, we'll show that uh, okay. Alderman Hayes is abstaining. He was not present with us in April. Well, you were here in April. Okay. Okay. But May, we, we didn't, any case, we had one where there was a, a few people missing. Oh, we didn't okay. have that before. Uh, for before the chairman, we'll, we'll save that for new business. Um, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak? Ms. Lee? I think you're the only public person here. So. Oh, thank you. Or Ms. Tucker. Anybody else that needs to speak? Okay. Old business, we'll just move into new business. So, in your agenda, and not everybody got it, I apologize for all of you that didn't see it, but um, we'll review the, the summary of what we are proposing. Uh, the resolution that you have now before you uh, is the culmination of a lot of work over the last uh, year or so. and. A couple things I just want to highlight in, in terms of the timing and you know how we got to this 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 proposal. Uh, back in February, I reported to this committee that we had a, a meeting called Armstrong, where a lot of our area planners and commission and, and uh, architects and engineers and, and a great group of leaders gathered to talk about potential uses for the barn. Um, and out of that meeting, uh, there were three leading concepts. One was around ag. One was around education. And the third that we really couldn't let go from that conversation was a music, something to do with music. Um, it shout out for that meeting because, you know, I haven't had a chance to say their phrases recently, but the Greater National Regional Council helped facilitate that conversation forward summer, uh, us organize that, that gathering. And so it was a very productive conversation. And from those three meeting concepts, um, as additional thought went into it, proposal that you see before you is really a combination of the top two, ag and education. Commissioner Hinton, can you raise your hand? Do you have a copy of this? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so just to keep in, in mind, I wanted to bring that as part of the conversation to let you know that that was uh, sort of the impetus for how we ended up with an ag and education solution. Um, so what the resolution essentially lays out in summary, I'm going to work over towards the computer. Um, what the resolution lays out is that with this proposal, Sumner, Council, Sumner County will transfer the funding that we have at this point uh, secured or approved or, or appropriated to the project, less any expenditures that we've had. So it's in the range of, I, is the grand total in there? 400 and just for the Make sure I got the number right before. $494,536. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. So that is the total amount that we would propose transferring to Sumner County Schools for building an ag and STEM learning center. So let me show you some things that go along with that definition. The, the resolution is pending approval of the Sumner County School Board and um, transfer of the property that's mentioned. Um, so it mentions 42 acres. So this picture, this is from our GIS uh, system for the county. So I don't know that you can readily tell, but in that triangle essentially um, 
it includes, I'm going to point to it, so this is where the Comer barn is currently, and this is the, um, this is the other agricultural barn that's on the property, and then this is uh, the tourism offices, Barry. So this 42-acre parcel is what is included in this resolution. Um, of that approximately, of course, not uh, this has not been surveyed, but of that 42 acres, three acres is proposed to stay within the county and then continue to sublease to Sumner County Tourism, um, along with that Oak Comer Mansion, and the remaining 39 acres would be transferred directly to Sumner County Schools. Um, so the resolution is pending approval of the school board, and um, they do have a study session this evening, so I know Dr. Phillips plans to share this plan with, with the school board this evening, and, um, and then additionally contingent upon transfer of the 42 acres from Rogers Group. Are there any questions on all of that? I have one question. All right, let's hear it. And I have no evidence to present to you. I've always been told, and Anthony, you may or may not be able to remember this, but I've always been told that that footprint of the tourism office, as it is now, was four acres and not three. But maybe y'all have already talked about that. I don't know. I have not seen anything that define that and, and that is there's definitely flexibility as we go to survey to make sure that we've got the right acreage. Um, and I may be totally wrong. I just what I've always been told by people and I've read where the four acres is the tourism office and then the driveway. as it exists now the rest of the barn property was 13 point something so it was a total of 17 point something acres. That sounds right. Does that sound right? They'll have to survey it all. Yeah. Probably rather than use acreage if you're going to pass resolution moving forward, I would be a little bit more uh, open to the lady. You've got a surveyor out there and they survey all the property because it won't really make any difference in acre on 42 acres, I would think. Right. Well, and that's right. The resolution but does... But you know what the intent is. The intent is to keep tourism in the location it is and use the rest of the property for our, uh, educational purposes. Right. Sorry. How much are you paying to have mowed? That might be part of the question. <laughs> how much am I paying? Yeah, how many, not, not how much money, but I'm saying how many oh, acres. the four acres. It well, is. The, foot, the current footprint, you know. The current footprint, which you believe is about four acres. Less which I the believe building. is about four acres, that's yeah. correct. And I'm not uh, trying to split hairs or anything. No, 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 no. I assume that this all gales and everybody's Right. There's certainly fencing right now that runs directly behind the barn and then around the, the tourism property kind of in this range. What if we just put in here estimated at this time to be plus or minus and we change three to four? How do y'all want to do that? I mean, why, don't you, why don't you want Leah to be determined by surveying? You've got, to put a, you've got to put some kind of number. <laughs> I'd put three, I'd put three to four then. I mean, just keep it open because whenever you survey it, you're going to... Right. I mean, I'm sure it's not exactly three or exactly four. There's no need to do that. I don't know the Rogers Group did that because they own the entire piece of property. Right. And the only reason that I'm thinking, you know, whatever you're paying for in terms of not the amount you're paying, but how many acres you've been uh, quoted as part of your lawn Lease, maintenance. Yeah. We leased it for, what, $100 a year there? Yes, sir. Is there a sticker on I'm sorry. Commissioner Hinton. <laughs> is there is there a stipulation on your document that you're paying for right now? If somebody was to say to you, how come well, why are you paying this money for you had a document that said that I am renting three point seven five acres? It, it, it just kind of has a, a border. It doesn't yeah. have a language. Uh, I don't think it's ever really been surveyed. Oh, okay. So it's going yeah. to match. Whatever we have a lease. Yeah, we have a lease with the county. The county has a lease with Rogers. Is that right? Uh, yeah, but your lease is for 17 acres. 
currently? Yes, currently tourism actually is leasing the whole 17 acres, the barn wow. property and everything. But I figured that would change you now that the barn has. Unless you want to start mowing it. No, no. <laughs> you're in the driver's seat, Barry. No. So we, okay. We're basically leasing the total amount of acreage for $100. I know yes. the largest group took advantage of this, but, you know, it's happening. <laughs> Alderman Hayes. Yes. yes, Chairwoman. There's a part of the property where I think there's a crossing over the CSX Railroad. Is that correct? It actually, um, on that drawing that we're looking at, um, yes, the property does go on the other side and there is a tunnel that goes across, but the top sort of angled line there of the triangle that I'm showing you, that is just inside of you. That actually says CXX transportation right here. Yeah, that's the railroad. So that's the railroad. Right there. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's property line. So we'll still have the you know, ability to go under the... Well, this property that we're talking about is all to this to the east of the railroad. What do you call that? What do you call that? There's a, a tunnel but of some sort. You can drive a vehicle underneath the railroad yeah. tracks if you have I just to. Know how CSX can be. Oh, there be yeah. yeah. We so, don't have to involve them in this right. scenario, don't which really is great. Need to. Just, right. I'm yeah. Curious. Yeah, but there is, you know, and it's a good question because you know, there's a lot of property like this that the quarry owns that they have no intent to access other than underground mineral rights at some point in time. So the property that is on the other side of the railroad is, is somewhat landlocked. Is it owned by Rogers Group? Yes. Okay. Yes. In fact, there's even some property, if I'm not mistaken, over here on the, the west side of 386 that's owned by the quarry. Mm -hmm. And then all of this here is owned by the quarry. Mm -hmm. And then that tunnel is somewhere in... It's back to, behind the Coma House. Yeah, it's down is it part of them. Yeah. Down here? Right. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Other questions? I expect a few. So in giving this to the school system, is there, is there a contingency plan for the protection of the site so we're not going to go in there and bulldoze one of the barns? And Is there a contingency plan in on the historical yeah. preservation side of this? That they're not going to demolish any of the... Yeah. The that the existing, school board's not going to go in. The existing market. structures. So there is very clear language in there that uh, the barn, the stone barn, and the Comer House have a, a specific purpose, okay. and, and that the, the barn and, and the house will continue to be used. Um, so that is referenced in the resolution. Um, and as we, you know, deed it to, as it's deeded, the property is deeded to the, the, the school system, I would expect there to be, you know, a, I suspect, I suspect the deed we get from Rogers group will have a lot of detail, you know, what they want done. Yep, but we have not drafted the, that new deed or, or you, know. I wanted, and, you know, I've said this from the very beginning when we first started talking about this, the, the hired man's house right behind the barn, I've always wanted that protected. Right, the keeper's so, course. Yeah. And let me, so that's a great transition. Um, so the next thing I have to show you this is a draft conceptual drawing that was done um, as a gift from Lowe's Architects, Lowe's Design. Um, they were one of the, one of their principals was in attendance at the barnstorming meeting we had back in February. And as an outcome of that meeting, they offered to generate an initial conceptual drawing. So this has been done completely free of charge. And this is a huge line item that we would not have otherwise been able to, to, to pay for readily. Um, and this is just to, kind of capture some of the dreaming that's been done at this point in time. Um, so I had told Ms. Lee that I wasn't ready to, to send this where she could necessarily take this and share this because we, we're going to continue to make edits to this and even over the next couple of weeks um, try to, to, to get a drawing that really re accurately reflects the priorities in this first phase. So over the last couple of weeks this, this was put together by Lowe's and with there's some other big priorities obviously affecting our director of schools and some of the decisions they've had to make totally unrelated to this project so we really haven't been able to fine-tune what's shown here on the drawing um, but it is exciting and so there's four yellow i'm going to start at the bottom there's four yellow dots that represent the existing structure so the stone barn um, the comer barn the keepers quarters as i call it and what do you call it hired man that's how I was always referred to. By Say it one more time. Hired man. The hired man quarters. <laughs> That's how I was always referred to. Wow. <laughs> so it is, in fact, there and it's definitely part of 
the, the plan to keep as some type of office space. Um, there is then item three, I don't know if you can see those. I tried to make these numbers as big as possible, but three is, here's my arrow. Three, the white barn. three yeah. is the, the, the wood barn that's still standing. Um, and then four is the tourism offices. So those are just existing structures. They're not shown here with any specific improvements. Um, the phase one improvements um, start with number one is this um, access point. And the reason that this drawing ends up being so small is because to keep it to scale and accurate, um, it's showing you that same set of approximately 42 acres that we were looking at on the previous picture. Um, but the entrance to this property uh, lining up with the, the new development that's going directly across the street where the ice rinks are coming, the goat farm development. So um, point one is an access into the Conler Barn property lining up with the goat farm. So there's a light here that's already being built into the plans for the goat farm and that would be where we'd propose to access it. Do um, you think there's enough room from the railroad tracks? Because that's real close to the railroad tracks right there. It is close tight. to the... And so they have looked at that. We haven't done a, any kind of transportation or engineering study on it yet. Okay. But um, they are aware that that would be our ideal connection point and, and so they've, they've given us uh, some indication that that should be possible. Uh, the second component here, of course, just a, an entry driveway that comes through. Um, our architect is a great uh, land lover, so we've got some different uh, gardens and spaces that couldn't resist including, but there is a, a grant for an orchard um, that we're going to see if we can't work with Jack Anderson. I think they already have a grant, and so we'll talk to them about maybe um, since it's right around the corner, maybe we can use that here or we can apply for a different grant. Um, item four is the parking, and so that would generally be a, a gravel parking lot with a uh, really good, sturdy, bus-friendly drive that goes around the outside, but otherwise natural parking. Um, this particular depiction and the sizing of it is for 236 parking spaces. Um, item five, and what really makes this plan work for the school system to create an Ag and STEM Learning Center is to have both the space inside the barn accessible for classrooms or other types of collaborative learning or um, workspace inside, right, in, in a covered structure. But then this element, element five that I was just referring to, is be directly behind the barn, and it's a much larger space for outdoor classrooms. And that would be where the amenity of bathrooms and any kind of, um, any kind of infrastructure that would enable school groups to come and use this property they would have these large outdoor classrooms in a covered pavilion. Um, so that is critical to the, the Ag STEM Learning Center concept or design. Um, and then also a greenhouse. And right now the greenhouse is shown right here directly behind the barn. Um, I don't, I'm sure that that's probably not ideal. And so that's one of the things and one of the reasons why this picture is not ready to hand out and, and send on its way. Um, part of the dreaming though that has gone on as part of uh, how does this space really play out. Some of these other phase two amenities I'll just touch on real quickly. Um, there's space here next to your, your piece of property there, Barry, yours, <laughs> just yours, uh, to, next to the tourism property, the space that could be used for an amphitheater, some outdoor learning. Um, the way that this drawing, if you didn't, if this part wasn't ghosted out in front to, to clearly show that as a separate phase two set of amenities, what you would see is a, a big open lawn. So beautifully preserved green space along the front edge of Nashville Pike so that the view to the barn is beautifully preserved. There's no driveway there anymore. There's no front door parking. Um, it would just be a lawn area. Um, and then along with that, some architectural, I'm sorry, agricultural fields for you know things that, crops that could be built and uh, tested. There's some other outdoor classroom type space, some additional greenhouses, uh, material storage. And then way back here at the far back of the property, this last item eight, uh, there is a pond back there currently next to that other older barn that sits at the back of this 42 acre piece of property. Um, and so that could be used for additional aquatic type learning. So a lot of dreams. Uh, as some might, you know, question, that this is about saving the barn, so all we have to do is zoom in and there's the barn, it's right there. It's in the center of all of this, so that is really the focus. Um, 
And the other thing that the resolution points out, and I just want to mention as part of the general discussion, is that just like any other school property, um, there are policies and procedures for uh, securing and using that property for other events. Um, you know, there are plenty of instances of school property being used for community activities. So whether it's the lawn or the pavilion, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for the community to continue to benefit from this solution. More questions? So this property in front of the barn that's not green, is that just a... Uh... It's just being kind of, there's just a, a transparent overlay to say this is not our focus for right now. Okay. What's really important for this to be able to work is the entry drive that's over here, the but parking. part of the school board property. It's part of that 42 acres that we're okay. talking about, yes. Yeah. Yep. And the Comer house, if you could... Sure. Please, ma'am. Is that, uh, let's see. So the Comer house here with your driveway. The, so number four is the Comer house and to the left of the number four is the driveway for the Comer house. Is that correct? Right, that, that gray, yeah, like okay. squiggly line, that is the current driveway. Thank it you. doesn't show the other access driveway that you have right now. It just shows the one. That'd be something else I didn't, didn't catch that we could improve. And would there be, and this, again, I'm just asking questions, I, I don't, because it's directly affecting me, I guess. The entrance to the Comer House, would there be a connection from that to that road back there, or would it be totally? Uh, That's a great question for the engineers. I don't know yeah. if it is or not. I don't know. I'm going to yes, um, because I've dealt with um, Dr. Phillips on the car. They want some separation public and the educational part of it. Sure. So somebody doesn't just come to the tourism office and... Well, that may not be a good thing if it was connected yeah, because right. I've actually... You know, he's yeah. Esther the Molester or whatever. And he sure. wanders around <laughs> over there where the school property is and creates an issue. And I think that's always, security is always an issue. And so I, I can't imagine that connected to, to be honest with you. Sure. Because we've talked about that with the park. We want access from the elementary school and middle school, but to have public access, we ought to make it easy for them to go over to the middle school or the elementary school from the public park. Right. And Luke, you may be able to tell me about this. There is a gate, uh, I'm going to call it an antique gate, Yeah. right behind the Comer House that's attached to that fencing there. So if that fencing is removed, we would probably want to know what would happen to that gate. I'm sure they'll, they'll take care of this stuff. Yeah. I don't know how old that is, it's pretty old. I yeah, I, it's probably close to when that fencing was put up. And you got rock steps the out, I mean, rock benches out there and all kinds of stuff. I doubt very seriously if they're going to. You talking about that gate? Yes, that gate right there. Yeah. It's just a beautiful gate and people love to, uh, go back there and get their picture made with it and all that kind of thing. Yeah. See, I wouldn't want something like that lost. That and there's a lot of other little nuggets yeah, that are little... similar to that. I agree. And this thing still has the main, the main gate from your property. The oh, iron the gate at, from your property. She bought that when they did the Harold Butler auction. I don't remember when that was. When the iron gate? Yeah. The main yeah. front entrance gate. It's either to the barn or to the um, tourism office, and I know she purchased it and took it with her, so I'm not sure where yeah. that is this time. But who is this? Vicky Comer. Who? Vicky Comer. Well, I mean, it's her property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take whatever she wanted to. Be. Did she have to buy? She but if we could just find the big canvases that used to hang in the entrance of the stone barn, that would really help. Do you have any leads on that? But I, I don't know if I've asked you that. I know that she has those, and I'm sure she would be willing to return them. Uh, hey, I'm just glad we're going this far. Yeah. I'm having lunch with her stepdaughter tomorrow. I'll ask about them. But anyway, Barry, to make the, your, put your needs, I'll work with Dr. Phillips. You know, we, yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know. We, uh, we will make sure that things keep going well with tourism. And when we started, we were in downtown Gallatin, the little office building. Now we have the Comer House. 
now you're going to end up owning the Coma House, which is a good thing because you know pretty much you're going to be there forever. Terrific. That's a great location for it. And I think it'll be even more prominent with what's going on if this is approved. More questions? I, I'd like to make a statement about all of it. We, we don't, uh, I don't have to say this for it to come out right. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can do it, you can go back. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we don't want to sign an agreement. We don't want to present this for approval with the details of how many fence posts there be and how many apple trees there be and how many peaches there be. Well, what this commission is, needs to be called upon to do is approve the concept of the fact that this property is going to be taken by the county. The county is going to be donated. We have, we have these commitments, but, but we don't want to, uh, we don't want two years from now to be going through a debate as to whether or not you can park an 18 wheeler out there on Old Apple or whatever. I mean, you, you can get in the weeds so deep right. that we'll stay out here four hours trying to, and, and really all we're doing, all we're doing is uh, securing the property, saving the barn, and, and turning the management over basically to the school board, to the school system. That's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Now, if there's some, if there's somebody that wants to jump and make a amendment or et cetera, et cetera, we'll have to deal with that when it comes up. But in, in your wise by not flaunting this around everywhere because you get somebody that falls in love with a fish pond, when you get under it's not a fish pond, and they're going to say, well, you said there was going to be a fish pond. So whoever, whoever puts this in the script needs to be very careful that we don't get too deep in the weeds as to what kind of faucets we're going to have in the barn and you know, all that kind of stuff. Because it's a never-ending spider web if you get into things. And, and what we're, some of what we're talking about here is exactly that. And this needs to go on. I don't mean that. that no, those things don't need to be addressed and everybody needs to be clear on this, that, and the other. Right. But you don't want to tie the hands of the school system so tight that they can't function in some area out there. And, and you don't want to leave it so loose that that uh, anything can go on. And, and that's a that's a tight rope. But I, I'm just saying when it comes to the county commission to be voted on, it needs to be succinct and as brief as it can be and, and get across. Well, you, you remember when we started how many years ago trying to save the Congo Bar? And that was all that was the issue in a one line to save the Congo Bar. So we're about to get there, but there's a bunch of other stuff that keeps, keeps popping in along the way. And it's things that have made this possible, things that have made it acceptable. But the, the, the school system being willing to take this and turn it into an ag center is a godsend as far as Tom Barnes is concerned. So we, we've gone from almost impossible to it looks like all we have to do is have one, one resolution pad, and that's, that's pretty amazing. But, but this, let's be very cautious when we go to it. Always the voice of wisdom. Thank you, Mr. Hinton. Totally agree. Any other comments or questions? So this will put to rest everybody's notion that when the Rogers group can take it back to the Correct. They'll be giving us the acreage. Good. Be simple. Because oh. I get tired of seeing that on social media all the time. <laughs> what about waiting until the weekend? <laughs> I've never heard of a school building rented for a wedding on weekend, have you? But maybe it's happened. But but here's here's the reality. If you agree to this and you turn this property over except for tourism to the school board, then the school board can utilize it the way the school board thinks it needs to be utilized. I, like there's a, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Well, and they have protocol for what they have already. So if you have a if you have questions to the liberty that the school board provides for the citizens of Summit County, can you rent a gym? Yes, you can. You have, 
the people at Red Gems to have church for a period of time. There. So if you want to, if you want to be comfortable with what is going to be done with it, then you can ask for a, what's what the school board allows right now. Uh, what it falls under the purview, it would be the same but slightly different. I, I think you mentioned two, and I think the takeaway from this is this: you know, there was those who just tried to pull obstacles to this continuously. One of the big obstacles they threw up, they got people stirred up about it, was this is going to compete against that right. private entities, that right. prevent centers. Yep. And it really never was going to. No. Nope. Uh, because there's a lack of available space in the county. But regardless, we know if the school board is in control of it, it's definitely not going to be against anyone that's in the event center business or trying to take business away from them. And that's always been a rub, hasn't it, Barry? Yes, sir. Uh, we had a couple of people that got out and stirred people up and said, well, the, the, the county's going to put you out of business. And they have unlimited funds. Some of the events that take place out there, those people may very likely get called upon to pay for you know. So, so anyway, what about the school The path forward for this resolution is to go to the county's legislative committee uh, next Monday and from there to the full commission the following Monday, the 20th. Um, meanwhile, the school board will go from study session today and then pending our approval, which is pending their approval, so it all has to work together. Uh, there is a school board meeting, meeting Tuesday, the 21st of September. So that's the approval path that we have in front of us. I move your take to the legislative committee and be there prepared for your dissertation. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> All in favor. Uh, uh, may I ask a question? Uh, any discussion to the first and second? Yes. Now, second. is this a, this is a motion to approve this whole thing? To approve the, to approve the resolution. Okay, I do have another question. May I ask this question at this time? Yes. I figured I better ask it now. Or, uh, <laughs> you, you are this, lucky. This I don't know. The very last sentence on the second page. Sumner County shall continue to grant to the tourism board hotel motel taxes and allow any excess from operation expenses to be used for Comer House maintenance. So this is a school, This the, the property that we're talking about, the three to four acres that remains um, available for your use is owned by the county. Yes. And the county is going to, with that solution, probably have more bills than the $100 a year we pay right now. When things go bad, they tend to go real bad with the Comer House. Uh, but my question is, excess, excess from what? Excess from, for example, this year? Hotel motel tax. I'm sorry? Hotel motel tax, the excess over the amount that the commission gives tourism, regardless of what that may be. Excess of the amount of our budget that's approved. Of your budget. Okay, right. I want yep. to clarify that point. That's all. Thank yep. you. We didn't want to present a solution without a, a clear funding source from the from I the think. county's perspective. You have a huge excess. You're going to raise that for raising the budget. <laughs> all right. I had a first and a second. Do I have any further discussion on the motion at hand? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I show it's unanimous. And that would be the conclusion of our new business, I believe. Is there anything else on here? You've got to figure out when you're going to meet now.
So for next meeting date, we've, we've shifted to kind of a quarterly schedule. Um, I don't think we need to meet next month. Um, and so beyond that, I would propose that we meet the first Monday of December the 7th. Pearl Harbor Day. 3 o'clock, what's that? That's Pearl Harbor Day, isn't it? It would be a good day to be together, right? Or, you still we want to be We'll meet at 3 o'clock. Yeah. We'd be maybe looking around for another barn to say. We might. <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> it's an excellent point. And, you know, if y'all remember when we first started this committee back in August, September ish of last year, um, there were three things that we talked about. One was getting our information deed signed, which we did pretty quickly. Second was coming back with a proposal to the owner bar. And third was defining a mission for this committee going forward. So, I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking, but it has been in my mind, and it is something that um, I've started to look at some other uh, examples of other functions like this and, and, and try to figure out if there is, in fact, uh, a broader mission that we need to stay in, in, in an organization for. So, we'll talk about that in December. All right, Tuesday, December 7th, 3 o'clock will be our next meeting. Is there anything else? Tuesday. December 7th, 3 p.m. With that, do we have any other announcements or other information for the public? All right. And by motion? The motion is we adjourn. Okay. Children, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Do you mind hitting that stop for me to hear? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope so.